In this episode we are going to be looking at the ribcage and pelvis. Taking the same approach with both of them, we will study them in detail, simplifying their forms for construction and drawing, then finally we will bring it all together. Let's approach each one of these separately and start by looking at the ribcage. So the ribcage encloses important parts of the body like the heart and lungs but luckily we don't need to know too much about that because when it comes to the ribcage what we are going to look at is its form and structure. So here it is on a front view and it's very similar to the shape of an egg. Drawing in an egg shape to simplify the ribcage can be quick and convenient for certain things but it's not an accurate representation. From these different views you'll be able to see the angle of the ribs and how they curve around the ribcage. From a back view it looks like this and you can see how the ribs start to angle down and as they reach the sides they angle down a lot more towards the front. Then finally here it is from a top down view. Now I've drawn all of these in detail, which isn't really necessary, especially for artists. It's not practical or even beneficial to draw this in such detail all of the time, so what we do is break it down to a simple form. But before we can simplify anything, we need to understand the actual form we are working with. Here we have a front, side, back and top down view of the ribcage, and from looking at this we can point out a few things. So from these projections you can see that there is actually subtle planes which make up this form of the ribcage and these are created as the ribs transition around. So although it is similar to an egg shape we have to flatten some areas out and consider these planes. For instance on the front of the ribcage there is an arch and there's also a slight arch on the back but it's a lot more subtle. On a side view you can see the top plane which tapers downwards and on a top down view you can see that there is this concave on the back which pushes inwards. So those are a few things which stand out right away and now we can simplify this down to a more basic form. This is what we are going to be using to represent the ribcage. It's a lot more convenient and practical for construction and we are still able to find areas which are important. You'll get a better idea of this and how to put it to use later in this video but before we get to that let's take a closer look at the structure of this ribcage. So for this next section I'm going to relate back to the previous episode on the spine. We had taken a look at the thoracic section which is the longest part of the spine and is made up of 12 vertebrae. These also make up the ribcage. There are 12 ribs. Each one of them connects to the vertebra. The vertebra, which we talked about in the last episode, also have these processes which extrude outwards and this is what meets the ribs. It's unnecessary to go too in depth and I've also just simplified the spine here and as you can see I'm just drawing in the ribcage having each of these ribs attached to each vertebra. This is good to know because when you draw the ribcage on the spine you know where it attaches and so that also means that it moves along with the thoracic section. So next to this I've also included the basic form of the ribcage on the same angle. But now from looking at the ribcage you can see that as these ribs come around the side they start to angle downwards and connect to what is called the costal cartilage. Let's get that front view up again and take a look at this cartilage. This is pretty much like an extension on the bone which prolongs the ribs forward and it's a lot more elastic providing more flexibility. Also this cartilage connects the ribs to the sternum which is here. It's the part which looks like a tie but this is made up of three parts. At the top there is the manubrium and this is where the clavicles would connect which is something we haven't covered yet. I'll be discussing that in the next one but this manubrium also connects to the cartilage of the first pair of ribs. The next part of the sternum which is the longest is the gladiolus and the smallest part at the very end is the xiphoid process. This part can vary in shape between individuals, it can be sharp at the end, blunt, straight or curved but I don't want to make things too complicated. So that is all of the parts which make up the ribcage but there is still a few things that I want to point out. This arch of the ribcage is called the thoracic arch and it can also vary in shape. For males it can tend to curve outwards more and for females it curves inwards. I don't want to get too much into the specifics, I'll be covering differences between males and females in future episodes. So now that we are familiar with the ribcage, it's time to take the simplified form and practice drawing this on various angles. What you should pay attention to here is the change in planes, the point in which the front plane transitions to the side plane and also the curvature of certain areas. 
I normally start by creating the top plane which tapers down whilst considering the perspective. Try and become familiar with this form. On some of these examples, I've drawn through the shape, seeing how the planes relate to each other. So now it's time to move on to the pelvis and like I did with the ribcage I'm going to draw this on a front, side, back and top down view. Also just a heads up, the form and shape of these bones vary between males and females. Instead of having to account for both differences in these episodes, I'm going to dedicate an episode after the skeleton has been covered which will focus on all of the differences. It's the same process for constructing and drawing everything. So this is the pelvis and it's quite a complex form. There is however methods which we can use to make this easier to understand. Before we get to that, let's take a quick look at this. You will most likely recognise the sacrum here because we had a look at that in the last episode and the reason why I have included it here is because it connects the hip bones together to form the overall pelvis. The sacrum curves around the back and the hip bones are at either side. So from looking at the pelvis on a direct front view like this, it seems like it would be pretty straightforward to simplify this down to a basic form. In the previous episode, I had temporarily drawn this in as a tapered cylinder and that's a shape which comes close to this, however, on a side view, there is a bit more to it. You can see how the sacrum curves around and how parts of the pelvis curve inwards and outwards at the top. There are numerous curves involved and overall it is quite challenging to understand the form and to be able to draw it accurately. It's definitely going to be one of the hardest things to tackle but we are going to take it one step at a time and start by taking a closer look. So the hip bone is made up of three parts. The largest part is called the ilium and this curves down towards the back and meets the sacrum. Like a lot of the bones in the body, you can see part of this ilium on the surface. The part which can be seen is the top edge of this bone at the front and these are landmarks which are useful to know when drawing the figure. I'm going to dedicate an episode to skeletal landmarks covering all of them so for now we just need to know that this edge curves from the front all the way to the back at the sacrum. This can also vary in shape between individuals, it can range from a smooth circular curve to a more sharp cornered curve at the top. So this next part is the pubis and this forms the lower front part of the pelvis. From a sad view, on a male, this point is also in line with the ilium. These relationships between bones are useful to know for when it comes to drawing them. Now finally, the last part of the hip bone is the ischium, and this forms the lower back section, connecting with the other bigger parts. You might have also noticed that there is this socket here, and this is where the femur bone attaches. We will be covering that when we get to the legs. But that's pretty much everything we need to know in terms of the structure of the pelvis, and so now for the most important part let's take a look at how to draw this so like everything else that we have covered in this series up to now the best way to draw something with a rather complex form is to simplify it down to a more basic form once we can do that there is the option to build on it with further details like we did with the ribcage, this is what we are going to use to represent and construct the pelvis. It's hard to really understand this form from these flat projections, so as we rotate this in perspective, you'll get a better idea for it. I discovered this method of simplification in Gottfried Baum's book, The Artist's Guide to Human Anatomy, so I recommend checking that out. From using this as a starting form, we can then work into it and start to build the pelvis. 
So here I've taken the front view and will now use this to create a more accurate form. I normally work through the same process when constructing this. Notice how some areas have been cut away and how I use these lines as a guide. Although this isn't going to give us a pelvis which is identical to how it actually looks, it's close enough and we are able to locate some of the key elements. As you can see here, I'm drawing in most of it using the block out as a guide and this is very helpful especially when it comes to drawing it on any angle. So next to this, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to draw the pelvis on various angles, starting with the basic form and then working into this. Pay attention to how I develop this. One thing that's important to realise is that the pelvis naturally tilts forward when the figure is in a neutral pose. It angles forward away from the rib cage. You'll see that more clearly as we start to put this all together. Like usual, I'm always considering the perspective and this is easier to do seeing as I've made this more geometric. Practice drawing this on various angles. You can see how on this one I'm drawing the pelvis from behind using the form that we had created for the back view. This is where you'll start to see the curvature of the sacrum. So now we have covered both the ribcage and pelvis, here I'm creating a three quarter view of both of them in detail and this is mainly to show how the basic forms can be used and developed further than rendered in detail. Most of the time though you won't need to draw every rib on the ribcage or every curve on the pelvis. When we draw the human figure we won't see this, although like parts of the pelvis there are a few ribs which can be seen on the surface of the body. This will be looked at more in depth when we look at the skeletal landmarks. So now it's time to bring these together and look at the relationship between them. We are already familiar with how the spine moves and as the spine moves these parts will move with it. The rib cage has the same limitations as the thoracic section of the spine because it's just attached to that and the pelvis is attached to the sacrum. From this side view in a neutral pose you can see how the pelvis has that tilt to it. So now with this and before we get any further, I want to address the proportions. I'm not going to go into too much detail here because like I've said before, I'm going to dedicate a full episode to the proportions of the figure. However, as we are going to be drawing this a lot, there are a few things that we can consider at this stage. If we take the height of the head and use it as a unit to divide up the figure, we can estimate the dimensions of everything else. For the ribcage, I make this around one and a half heads in height and close to two heads wide. The pelvis is around one head in height. The width of the pelvis is pretty much equal to the ribcage and that's all we really need to know at this stage to practice drawing this. Again, I'll be going more in depth in a future episode, but now let's take a look at how we can put everything that we have looked at to use. A vital part of studying anatomy is to practice a lot of figure drawing. Studying and observing from life can be very beneficial. Through this series, the aim is to gain an understanding of anatomy with the end goal of being able to design and construct figures from imagination. Here I'm bringing everything that we have looked at in previous episodes together, drawing the three masses on the spine. The spine is responsible for the position of these and so it's important to consider how it moves. If we was to tilt the ribcage backwards, the pelvis will tilt away from it. Try and remember this tilt and through practicing figure drawing, you'll become more familiar with it. In the next episode, we are going to take a look at attaching the shoulder bones and we still have a long way to go with this, but if we take it one step at a time, we will eventually get there. So if you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, then please give the video a like, subscribe with the notifications on to stay up to date, and that's everything, thank you for watching.